one time on a date with a woman that was really into MMA and powerlifting. At one point, she got really fed up with me. She said to me, she goes, I can lift over two times my body weight. What about you? I said, lady, I'm a stand-up comedian. I can barely lift my spirits. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Here doing this. I'm also uh, here to see uh, some family. Does anyone here have a family? Anyone have a family here? No? Okay, wow. Wow, it's like an orphan support group. Is everybody just here for a hug? <laughs> Maybe catch a football? <laughs> My mom's a lovely lady. She's uh, from South America. She doesn't speak English very well at all. She also doesn't really get jokes. She's very literal, and sometimes I forget that. One time I was on the phone with her, and she asked me, when am I getting a girlfriend? And just as a joke, just jokingly, they go, come on, Mom, you're the only girl for me. There's like a 10-second pause. Then I hear my little Hispanic mom go, I, that's not good. <laughs> I go, Mom, what are you trying to say? She's like, Eddie, I'm your mother. Like, what the fuck is happening right now? My mom just become a hot chick in high school, like, ugh, get over me. <laughs> I'm with your father. I'm with your angry little papa. <laughs> I, did have a, I did grow up with a small dad. My dad's about yay high. I don't know why. Immigrant parents are just travel-sized people. I don't know why that is. I was always afraid of my dad growing up. I don't know why that is. I outgrew him when I was like 15. He was like, go to your room. I should be like, no and just toss it, <laughs> just flying through the air like, why would you do this to me? <laughs> immigrant parents, who's got immigrant parents here? Round of applause. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I saw someone look behind them. Are they here? No. <laughs> like your parents are gonna be like, hey, hey, you should be working, why are you here? <laughs> Here's the thing about immigrant parents, and a lot of parents are like this. My mom cares way more about financial stability than mental stability. They care way more about what's going on in your bank account than what's going on in your head. One time I told my mom that I want to talk to a therapist, and her gut reaction was, what? No. If you talk to me, save your money. <laughs> I can't talk to my mother about my mother, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what am I going to say to her? Like, oh my God, you never believe what you did to me. Uh, <laughs> I told a friend this, he's like, what's the problem? I tell my mom everything. You can't tell an immigrant mom everything. They'll take what you say, flip it, and make you feel worse. One time I told my mom that I was crying in my car, she goes, oh, Eddie, it's probably because you have a crappy car. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, though. I don't know what it is about immigrant parents. They're just fascinated by occupations that make money. Like, I could bring a friend over and be like, it's my friend Greg. He's a lawyer and a misogynist. She'd be like, ooh, lawyer, wow. <laughs> and he does massages, too. Eddie, he's got two jobs. <laughs> Immigrant dads are funny, too. I think a lot of our dads are like this. They grew up poor, and when they finally get money, they love to show off to their kids how prepared they are for the future. My dad loved flexing on his kids of how prepared he was down the line in life. One time, my dad pulled me aside and he goes, Eddie, listen to this, okay? My casket, my funeral, my plot, my tombstone, uh, already paid for. <laughs> huh? I go, Dad, I'm 12. <laughs> he goes, I know. Happy birthday. <laughs> I'm, that's not even a joke, that's a quote. My dad would pull me aside and be like, hey, when I'm dead, you don't got to do anything. Just go home and cry. <laughs> what do I say back like? Can't wait. <laughs> People often ask when my parents met, and this is a 100% true story, right? My dad, born and raised in Italy, moved to North America when he was 30 and became a construction worker. My mom, born and raised in Peru, 
came to North America, became a cleaning lady. And that's how they met, right? My dad was like a bachelor. And was kinda, he didn't know what to do in terms of cleaning a house. So when the newspaper hired someone to clean his house, it was my mom. She came over. He asked her out. She said no. Then get a little of this guy. He hired her seven more times. Asked her out every time until she finally caved in and said yes. Which sounds like a love story written by a bigot. Uh, <laughs> these occupations are too on the nose. It almost sounds like a bad 90s sitcom. Like, here's a show. He's a pushy, macho Italian construction worker. She's a shy South American cleaning lady. They fall in love. We'll call it bada bing, bada broom. What do you say? <laughs> ah! <laughs> It'll fit in here, Fox. It'll be good. Hmm. Trying to be a better dude. I, uh, this is something I've always, I've always wanted to do. And, uh, Listen, I'm not saying this to show off, but I just joined the Big Brother program. Thank you. Oh, I'm not a hero, I'm just a guy. Uh, <laughs> it's something I always want to do, and finally, for the first time, finally, I have a big brother. So, <laughs> <laughs> Woo, feels nice for the first time. He came over yesterday, like, uh, his name's Steve, he's 45. He's like, aren't you a bit old for this? I asked for a brother, not a narc, Steve, all right? <laughs> Get my look out of the way. I actually bought this jacket just for this show. Yeah, it's Gap Kids, Girls Medium. But, uh... <laughs> I got the mustache, too. You guys liking the mustache? That's the, re that's the response you want for a mustache. You don't want someone to be like, yeah! Love it! Like, okay, that's creepy. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Touch me. <laughs> It's funny, you ask questions about the mustache, you get interesting answers back. Like one time I asked an audience, I go, hey, uh, should I get rid of this mustache? And some lady went, yes, now! <laughs> it's not a prop, lady, I didn't get this for the show. I didn't have a jewelry drawer and be like, hmm, an extra eyebrow, I'll be a creep tonight, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you get weird comments after show when you got a mustache, you know? Like one time I did a show, and everyone was from overseas, everyone was from Europe, right? No one really spoke English very well. And some lady came up to me after the show. She's like, excuse me, uh, Mr. Comedian Man? I go, yeah. She goes, I just wanna say, I really liked your comedy routine. I go, oh, thank you. Then she goes, I really like your mustache. You look like a pornographer. <laughs> Not even a star? <laughs> a person who produces and makes adult films? Which means she looked at my face and went, you look like the kind of guy, people are having sex, you be holding the camera. <laughs> you look like a real cine creep, you know? <laughs> One time, I asked someone in the front row, I go, do you have any tattoos? And the woman said, no, I don't. I go, oh, okay. She's like, but I want to get one on my back, a big one, but I can't. I go, why not? And then she said, I can't because I have too many moles. That's the grossest reason not to get a tattoo. Do I just console her? I'd be like, oh, no, no, you can get something, just uh, connect them. Uh, <laughs> I'd be like, hey, look, it's a leopard. <laughs> or a sad Dalmatian, I can't tell. <laughs> I feel like women can get really simplistic tattoos. That can be just three words, but it can be really deep in meaning. I have a friend, she has three words on her wrist. I go, what are they? She goes, I have think, believe, dream on my wrist. I go, why did you get that? And she said, because I want to accomplish one of these things every single day. <laughs> Guys can't get a three-word tattoo, because if they did, they'd be horrific. Imagine like a straight guy with a three-word tattoo. It'd be like, oh, my wrist, it says eat, shit, sleep, right on my wrist right here. <laughs> and the other wrist says repeat. So uh, I hope I accomplish one of these every single day. <laughs> Getting some grays, too. Do women like grays on a guy? You guys like grays on a guy? Yeah. Wow, okay. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but I bring my life coach to every show, so yes. I like it and so do others, Eddie. <laughs> Believe in yourself. Women say that all the time. I love gray hair on a guy. I just love gray hair on a guy. Listen, when they say that, they mean his head. <laughs> it's all about specificity. No one wants a salt and pepper crotch, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nobody wants a groin with that well seasoned. No one wants to pull down some pants and be like, is that a scrunched up newspaper? What the fuck is that? <laughs> Between your legs. <laughs> no one's bragging about that guy either. 
No one's coming home to her friends, and they're like, hey, did you hook up with them? I did. Was it big? No. But it did look really wise. Uh, <laughs> I was like, hmm, do I touch it or ask it? What's a reverse mortgage? You know? <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Thank you. <laughs> he's very tall, by the way. I don't know why he's... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I always find it interesting when people find attraction from somebody too. Like straight guys in the audience. What do you find? What's your favorite body part in a lady? Sir, what's your favorite body part in a lady? Everything. Everything. It's my wife, I have to say that. Wow, what a good guy. <laughs> you could set eyes. No, no, I like everything I see here. Because I have to. <laughs> Easy question, you could have named anything. And you're like, I don't know, ask her what I like. <laughs> Sometimes you get like frat boys in the front row. I'll ask them that question and they'll say the same thing. One guy goes, boobs. Another guy goes, I like tits, I like ass. And one time I asked a guy in the front row, he was like an older guy just looking down, not paying attention. I go, how about you, sir? What's your favorite body part in a lady? This old guy looks up at me and goes, I like the neck. <laughs> and he even did the jerking motion, which is... Not good for anybody. Who like jerks a neck? Like, nice. You like that too? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Who says neck only? I feel sorry for this dude. He goes to a zoo, he sees a giraffe, he's gonna freak the fuck out. He's like, whoa, who is she? Hello, ladder throat, you know? <laughs> Like a nice, girthy neck. Like a rugby neck. <laughs> That'd be kind of creepy, right? Ladies, you wake up, some guy's just licking your neck. What's my favorite part? <laughs> <laughs> we got, um, got any single people in the audience? Single people, where you at? I, I didn't know claps could sound sad. <laughs> Why, what are you gonna say about it? You gonna make me feel bad at a comedy show? I hate this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody on the dating apps, dating app people? <laughs> that's, that's the reaction every woman in 2023 gives for dating apps. Woo! <laughs> it's fun out there. What apps are you on? May I ask that? What apps are you on? Hinge. Hinge. Whoa, did you just come over there? Well, that's great. <laughs> it's like a squirrel. It's like, ah, I gotta get out of here. Hinge. I'll be over there. <laughs> I feel sorry for ladies on dating apps. It's, it must be tough for the ladies on the dating apps, you know. Looking for a guy on a dating app must be like looking for used Ikea furniture on Craigslist. <laughs> Everything looks well put together, but you know deep down, that thing's fucking broken, all right? <laughs> it's not stable at all. It'll fall apart as soon as I apply pressure on that. <laughs> Guys on dating apps are different. Guys want to be like furniture on dating apps. They're like, no, 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 take me home, use me. If you don't like me, pass me off to a friend. <laughs> Just put me out in the front. Someone will pick me up, you know? <laughs> Just sit on me. <laughs> <laughs> Women are getting aggressive on dating apps, too. Because I was on Bumble, and the way it works on Bumble is women say hello first. You have to wait for them to introduce themselves first, right? That's the way it works. And I assumed everyone's going to be like, hello, how are you? Hey, say something nice. Sometimes you get ones that are really aggressive. I didn't know they existed out there on dating apps. One woman, first message she said to me was, any good in bed? <laughs> and I was caught off guard, and I wrote, no complaints. And I gave this guy emoji. <laughs> no one's ever gotten laid after this emoji. No one's been like, hey, you wanna get slammed tonight? <laughs> no complaints. It's not really a compliment to yourself. I might as well just been like, you know, I've often been called a forgettable lover. Uh, I think that's a Drake song, but. Uh, <laughs> no complaints. Yeah, that's what I said back. 
Yeah. Is anyone admitting the inverse on a dating app? That'd be kind of cool. Some woman's like, hey, any good in bed? And the guy's like, well, funny should ask. <laughs> There's been some complaints. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting a lot of that's it after I'm done. So <laughs> a lot of bad reviews. <laughs> Went on a lot of bad first dates. A lot of bad ones. Sometimes this is what happens. You match with somebody, you go on a date with someone. You know they're not a proper match for you, but you do it anyway to see how it goes. One time I went on a date with a woman that was really into MMA and powerlifting, right? She kept talking about her ex-boyfriend the whole time, how great he was. And I said, well, what does this guy do? She goes, oh, he's a bodybuilder. Oh, and why'd you guys break up? She goes, well, he wouldn't stop doing steroids, but you know what? He's got a big heart. And I ruined the date by saying, don't you mean enlarged? Uh, <laughs> At one point, she got really fed up with me. She said to me, she goes, I can lift over two times my body weight. What about you? And I said to her, lady, I'm a stand-up comedian. I mean, I can barely lift my spirits. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're ripped on the outside. I'm crumbling on the inside, all right? <laughs> anyway, she got real testy with that one. But uh, <laughs> once one day with a woman that was a lot older than me, Every guy wants that, but you realize how unprepared you are as a man to date an older woman. I was 25 and she was 43, right? Yeah, I'm telling you, I thought I was gonna give her the business off the top, let her down slowly off the top. This is what I told a 43-year-old woman off the top on a date. I go, just so you know, I don't wanna have kids. And she goes, honey, I think you may know my kids. <laughs> Then the bill came, we split it, she paid, I tipped. And uh, <laughs> we went back to her car, we start making out, and then she goes, I want you to own me. I was like, lady, I'm a millennial. <laughs> I, I don't even own my phone. Uh, <laughs> I can't own a lady. <laughs> One thing I, I will say about women is women can detect a good partner way quicker than guys can. I feel like guys, it takes a little longer for them to see that. Like, a woman could be dating a guy for two weeks, come back to her friends and be like, oh my God, he's perfect. We have the same likes, dislikes, same values, same sense of humor. We like the same music. I think he might be the one. Guys don't see it as quickly as women do. Guys are like, well, we live together, we have a dog together, and our parents are going on vacation together. I mean, what are we? <laughs> anyway, I gotta go pick up our kids from school. We're really starting to get to know each other, really, so... <laughs> We all follow our exes on Instagram. Don't follow an ex on Instagram. Because sometimes you get one of these exes that purposely post pictures just to get a rise out of you, just to get your attention really manipulative. They know you're watching. They try to fuck your head a little bit. She posts a picture of her at the hospital with her new baby and husband. Like, okay. <laughs> Stacy, stop. I know what you're doing. You're not going to get in here. I'm going to stop following you. And on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> I, am, uh, I am in a relationship. And uh, you learn stuff about yourself all the time in a relationship. Like recently she told me that I'm the jealous type. Like I've never been the jealous type. Round applause. Who has ever been with my girlfriend? Uh, <laughs> I want to fight. I want to watch. Uh, <laughs> that got creepy. <laughs> I got weird at the end. I live with my girlfriend, and uh, you know, it's the first time in my adult life living with a woman. And I thought I was gonna find myself loving her a little more each day, but what I'm finding is a lot of hair. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of hair when you live with a lady. There's no three second rule in my house when you live with a woman. I dropped a chicken finger one time, I'm like, nope, that's a hamster now. Uh, <laughs> do I feed it or eat it? I don't know. She's like, we need a dog. What we need is a Roomba, all right? <laughs> Every guy here who lives with a woman has one of her hairs on their body right now, whether you like it or not. Sometimes you fight it in weird parts of your body. Went to the urinal one time. I looked down. I pull one of her hairs out of my crotch like this. And I look over. There's some guy just staring at me. I don't want to say back. I went, uh, don't worry. It's not mine. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not creepy. It's a, it's a lady's hair. Stored in my crotch. <laughs> yeah, I live with my girlfriend. Uh, can I even say that anymore? 
I think any man over the age of 40 can't say he lives with a girlfriend. You got to move on from that phrase. I've tried other stuff. I've tried partner before, but she makes a lot more money than me. I feel more like a minority shareholder, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just lucky to be part of this company, you know what I mean? Sometimes I'm not sure what to say. One time I was in a bar, and some lady came up to me. She's like, so what's your situation? I got nervous and went, uh, I have a woman at home. <laughs> like, I'm sure she would like her rights back. <laughs> We brought Don Draper to the bar here. <laughs> my, uh, my girlfriend, she has a love language, all right? I didn't know what that was. I didn't, I'm a dumb guy. I didn't know what a love language was. She goes, hey, what's, so what's your love language? And I went, uh, English and on top. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can say I poppy. I'll take anything, really. I just... She's like, no, 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 what is it? I go, well, what's your love language? She's like, well, mine is uh, acts of service and gifts. And I'm like, ooh, that sounds expensive. <laughs> yeah, I'm a touch guy because touch is free, you know what I mean? <laughs> For Christmas, she's like, I want a weighted blanket. Like, how about I just lay on top of you? <laughs> and quality time, that's a twofer, you know? That's a good one. <laughs> My, uh, my lady, she likes to role play, but she likes a really specific role play that I don't really like, but I play along because I'm a good guy. This is what this freak likes to do. She likes to get me dressed up, and then we go to an open house and walk around and pretend that we're in the housing market. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, this will be your personal office? She's like, fuck, say it again. <laughs> How much is our down payment? Tell me. Oh, 250. <laughs> walk into a house, the realtor's like, so what do you guys do? Like, I'm a doctor, this is my mistress. She's like, why did you say that? Like, I thought we're living our fantasies here. Like, <laughs> I met her parents, all right, girlfriend's parents. Here's the deal, my mom is from a third world country, she's from Peru. Third world country parents only care about two things, don't be broke, don't get arrested, that's it. I met her parents, they're white, like really white. Like an episode of Succession White, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like whoa, there's no color in this at all. Like, <laughs> my mom's asked me zero questions about my career. You meet a mom from like Indiana, they ask you questions, they care. So I met Sharon for the first time. I go, I'm a stand-up comedian. She goes, oh my God, wow, really? What kind of comedian? You tell jokes on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube? Do you roast the audience? Like, babe, <laughs> I think your mom's hitting on me. Uh, <laughs> I told my mom I'm a stand-up comedian, then she told all her friends that I'm a clown. <laughs> I go, mom, I don't wear makeup. She's like, oh, you're like a lazy clown. <laughs> a lazy clown in a crappy car. It's not good. I took an Uber to the show, and uh, I'm kind of glad we don't do Uber pool anymore. Isn't that great? No one does that anymore. I used to hate Uber pool because you get that one guy who's a little too energetic, a little too excited to be in the car. He's enjoying the Uber pool experience. You know that guy? He's got Book of Mormon vibes. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Dress shirt, backpack, sits down, looks at everyone in the car like, so how's everybody doing? Like, okay. <laughs> this is a car, but these are bus rules. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't come here to make a friend. I came here to save $1.50. You know what I mean? <laughs> So I'll be on our phones like a bunch of angry friends on a road trip, all right? <laughs> I used to get really uncomfortable in Ubers, but I found a bit of a life hack. You guys can apply this too. Did you know this? You don't have to go by your government name in an Uber. You can change your name to whatever you want, and I change it to feel more comfortable in these cars. Like, I'll actually sit down in the car. The driver will be like, um, hey, son? <sighs> Five stars, dad. <laughs> And then we don't talk for the whole ride and it feels really familiar, you know what I mean? It's like he's driving me to school again, you know? I do live in uh, Los Angeles now. And uh, this is what they say about LA all the time. Every time I come home or anywhere really outside the city, they say the same thing. It's like, oh my God, the weather's so nice there. And then they'll look me in the face and be like, you live there? I'm like, yeah. Everyone's fake there. Everyone's a phony there, huh? That might be true. At least they're nice about it. You feel good about yourself. It's positive phoniness. Like, I could walk to a Bloomingdale's in Beverly Hills, have ketchup and mustard all over my face. When the employees look at me like, oh my God, you look freaking fantastic. 
Who are you wearing? Uh, Heinz? <laughs> of course, classic. <laughs> New York is the opposite. New York, they roast you immediately for what you're wearing. They don't care at all. They have no filter whatsoever. It's true, one time I was leaving an Airbnb in Harlem, and it was dead of winter, and all I heard is this, nice boots, bitch! <laughs> I look over like, hey man, you can't say that to me. He goes, why not? I go, because you're the host of this Airbnb. <laughs> He's like, what are you gonna do? Write a bad review like a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> man, the traffic in this town's gotten bad. Ooh, man, bad traffic. You think there's bad drivers in every major city you go to. There's also bad pedestrians too. We've all encountered this type of person, right? This happened to me, okay? I'm in my car, pulling up to a stop sign. And there's a guy across the street looking down, texting. And I came within a couple feet of hitting him. Just a couple feet. And this guy snapped. He comes up to my window and goes, hey man, you almost hit me. What the fuck was that? You almost hit me. I'm like, dude, relax, it's fine. We were both on our phones. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they cancel each other out. I'm bad at texting, I'm bad at texting. I don't know what it is. I text when I'm angry, that's the worst. Never text when you're angry, because sometimes you'll text something that can totally change the whole conversation. Like one time this guy I know owed me money, owed me 100 bucks, never paid me back. I was like, you know what, that's it. I want my money back. So I was texting like, hey man, I have a bone to pick with you, $100 question mark. But I wasn't paying attention, and I accidentally wrote him, hey man, I have a boner pick for you. Hundred bucks? <laughs> All I'm saying is I got my money real fast. Uh, don't text the wrong emoji too. Sometimes you can text the wrong emoji. It can totally change the conversation as well. Like this guy, I text him like, hey, what's going on, a buddy? I haven't heard from you in a while. He replied back, hey, my cat just died. I was like, okay. So I went to go to my recents to get my heart, but I wasn't paying attention. I accidentally gave him the flame emoji. So from his perspective, he reads, hey man, my cat just died. I'm like, that's fire. <laughs> <laughs> he replied back, he goes, what's that supposed to mean? And I panicked and went, cremated? <laughs> <laughs> so, I think it worked. <laughs> we care so much about phones. The condition of your phone tells a lot about a human being, you know? Like one time I was seeing a buddy when I was visiting home, I go, hey man, what's going on, what's new? He goes, dude, life is great. I'm sober, I got a new girl, new place, new job, couldn't be happier. I go, that's great. Then he pulls out a shattered iPhone, like, no, nope, I think your life's in shambles. Uh, <laughs> you say what you want, but I believe the phone. I look closer, it's an Android, like, whoa. <laughs> I guess we're never gonna be close friends. <laughs> Samsung people, are you here? Yeah. Just so you know, everyone hates you in a group chat. So, <laughs> what are we doing, guys? Uh, greenies here. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing, too. Never, ever hold a single guy's phone. It's the filthiest thing on the planet. You got a friend who's single? His phone, what lurks in that machine, you don't want to know. I had a buddy who's always dating someone. I go, hey man, what's going on? He goes, Check this, look at this girl I'm dating. Look at this picture. I look, and then I accidentally swiped to the next photo, and a dick pic popped up, and I just dropped the phone. <laughs> and this guy goes, hey man, relax. It's just mine. <laughs> yeah, bro, that's the problem. <laughs> Which begs the question, why wouldn't it be yours? <laughs> Think about that. Every dick pic that's been in my phone has been mine. I've never gone through my photo album and be like, wait a second, <laughs> who is this? <laughs> That's not my curve. <laughs> Let's talk about penis size, shall we? Yes. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know why I just became a, like, a, like a creepy uncle at a barbecue. Let's talk about penises, huh? <laughs> what do you got? Me too. <laughs> yeah. Every guy knows the size of their penis, right? You know the size of your penis, sir, right? What about you, dude? You're long and thin. You're probably packing something long and thin. <laughs> I don't know why I approach guys like a border guard. What do you got in your pants, son? 
Nice. <laughs> Hope you got a permit for that. I'm not here to brag, but I am 10 inches. I do measure from my asshole out, so. <laughs> yeah, they don't tell you where to start. It's really dealer's choice. You can be whatever you want to be, guys. It's 2023. My pronouns are he big, so. <laughs> No, I am a regular sized guy, but I do wear magnums though. Not because I'm big, but I grew up in the 90s. I like a little baggy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Girls are like, is that on properly? No, but it looks fucking cool. <laughs> How old are you, dude? How old are you? 27. Oh, wow. Man, I don't know what it is. I just feel old lately. Don't you feel old? Yeah, I'm at that point now, maybe you guys are there too, where the worst sound of the world is sitting next to a bunch of teenagers laughing and having a good time. <laughs> you ever sit next to a bunch of kids just laughing and having a good time? You just want to walk to them and be like, what the fuck is so funny? <laughs> Have you seen gas prices? <laughs> Have you seen gas prices? I had to take a loan out to buy groceries. None of us are going to buy a home in this city, none of us. And they're like, bet. And like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> you bet, you betcha? I don't know. Am I acting kind of mid? I don't know. Is that something? <laughs> I don't know what anything means anymore. I don't. I'm out of touch. That's okay. But sometimes I get caught off guard. Like one time, I was leaving a Starbucks, just holding a coffee. And some 17-year-old girl is just standing right next to the doorway. And they went like this as I walked by. They go, hey, short king. <laughs> like, I didn't know I was anointed. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, what, me? I was confused. I was looking around. I just looked at them and like, it's actually a tall Americano. Uh, <laughs> looks big in my hand for some reason. These are the most honest people in the world, all right? 17-year-old girls and old immigrant men. No one is more honest to your face than those two people. Like one time I went to this dry cleaners, had to get these pants hemmed, put them on the table. And I go, hey man, I gotta get these hemmed. This old Middle Eastern guy's like, how long do you need? I go, my inseam is 28 inches. And he goes, oh yeah? And then he pointed at my legs and went, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to roast the customers off the top. I was afraid he's gonna call staff, like, hey, Larry, get over here. Look at this guy's legs, man. Are those shoes on your knees? I'm like, I'm a short king. No, no, you're a petite prince, okay? <laughs> your highness, more like your lowness, you know? <laughs> it's funny, though. Remember when you're young? Like, you're at that age now where certain things excite you that used to excite me, but they don't, now it's a totally different scenario, right? What gets your heart racing is way different than what gets my heart racing. Like at 27, you walk to a packed bar, shoulder to shoulder, shots, music blaring, you're like, okay, this is my kind of place. Now I only get that excited when I walk into an empty grocery store. I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is my kind of place. Woo, gonna find a hot snack and take her right to bed. <laughs> Who knows what I'm gonna make tonight? A quiche. Uh, <laughs> I don't vape. I don't hit a jewel at all. I think it's one of the worst things you can do to your body. I look at it so negatively that one time I was in this house party. Everyone's a lot younger than me. Everyone's vaping. There's clouds everywhere. And then I saw a girl walk by me smoking a cigarette. My first thought was, wow, good for you. <laughs> you made the healthy choice. She's like, I know. It's like vintage. Like, fucking kill me. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you guys having a good time tonight? You guys having a good time tonight? Let me hear you, yeah? Yeah. I'm glad you could be here for this. This is a big moment, you know? Like, here's the thing. Like, I'm an insecure guy. I think a lot of people are. I'll take a compliment from anybody. One time I was in this bar, and I'm with a buddy. And some guy came up to me, gave me a piece of paper. On the paper it says, name, his number, and they said, let's hook up, and then he walked away. And my buddy goes, hey, you're going to toss that out? I'm like, no, are you kidding? It's a compliment from a gay man. This means a lot. This has a lot of currency. You go to my house, you'll see it. I'll be like, that's my diploma. 
that's when a small Filipino man wanted to plow me. That's my family. <laughs> that's everything I'm proud of. Thank you, Ernie. <laughs> People give boomers a hard time, too. People think, oh, boomers are out of touch. They're out of touch. They're not inclusive. They're not tolerant. I think you gotta give them a second. They show it in different ways. Like one time I was in South Carolina and I'm crossing the street and two women are about maybe like five feet away from me, just making out, just full on making out on the street. Both shaved heads, tattoos, and piercings all over their face, just making out. And some old woman looked at them and went, ugh. And then she walked towards me, about to say something. I'm like, okay, here comes something really big at it. She looked at me with it. Look at those two girls. I mean, why would you do that to your head? <laughs> That's progress. <laughs> I mean, I'll take it. Uh, I'd love to see this lady at the Pride Parade, just guys covered in leather, just dancing on a float. She's like, ugh, aren't you boys hot? <laughs> <laughs> but hey, we're here, we're having a good time. Yeah, you know what? I'll leave you guys with this. I made fun of you, we joked around. But sometimes people take jokes a little too seriously. You know, our intention isn't bad, but we just do it to have a good time. There's a guy in the front row, good looking guy with red hair. I go, hey, you're like a hot ginger, huh? This dude comes up to me after the show, puts his finger on my chest, goes, hey, why did you say that? I go, say what? You can't call me that word, it's a slur, it's offensive. And I went, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to offend you. Then he doubles down and goes, okay, but just so you know, and I quote, it's kind of like our N-word. <laughs> now you lost me, Ed Sheeran. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. It can't be that bad a word if it's also an ingredient in a smoothie, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no one's at a sushi restaurant and be like, hey, pass a ginger, like, whoa, hearty R. Say ginger. <laughs> that joke offends one out of every 10 white guys. So uh, if you want, you can rush the stage, but they won't because the lights are bright and they'll burn. But uh, <laughs> you guys have been a lot of fun. I've been Adel Seppi. Thank you so much for being part of this taping, everybody. And have a great night. Eddie Del Seppi, everybody, one more time, huh? Isn't he something? <laughs> <laughs>